Why, hello, la ladies and gentlemen of Planet Earth and Beyond. It's DJ Liam Mack. Welcome you to a tag video. I don't do tag videos very often, but I've just been called out by a Mr. Meerkat. Lovely chap. I recommend you check out his channel. Link in the description below. But yes, he's tagged me in order to, well, say about my 2016. The actual name of the tag has been called Answering Questions About My 2016. Very original. So, without further ado, let's begin the tag, shall we? There are over seven questions to answer, and... Oh, I have them on my phone, I just... I literally just hit the wrong keys, okay. Oh, off to a good start already. So these tags, there are seven of them. And they come in the variety of good and bad games of 2016. We'll start with the good. Good games of 2016. Oxen free. Ratchet and Clank, the remake, and Fury. Reason why? I love these games. Auction was a brilliant game. I played it on my channel. It was literally the game that's... Uh, here's the thing. I only had two games on my favorites on my Steam. One of them is Oxen Free. The other, that'd be Undertale. So you can tell it is a good game. Basically, think like Life is Strange, how you get to travel back in time... But you don't really travel back in time. In fact, the main character doesn't even have time travel powers. They just go with the flow of time. Weirdly enough, you have to play it. And Until Dawn, because there was a cast of friends, and they get sucked up into this weird, weird, wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff. It's, it was interesting. The Ratchet and Clank remake basically was nothing more than a tie-in from the movie. But oh my god, that movie was brilliant! And finally, a video game movie that I loved. And the game, I am a huge Ratchet and Clank fan, and I, I was like, oh, oh, I remember all of this, Chairman Drek. Oh, it's so, it's all oh, the memories, the memories are flashing back. Oh. And then there was Fury. That was pretty much a game that came out of nowhere. It was literally a game that's basically, I played it for my channel for a stream, and it's just a boss rush game. And you're just calmly walking. You're getting narrated along your way by a weird rabbit-looking Navit type of character. Like Navit out of Super Mario Bros. But it was interesting. It was quite enjoyable. Still haven't finished it. It's on my to-do list. But the bad games. Ooh, where can we go from here? I know. I could just go with the most obvious choice. No Man's Sky. Uh, no Man's Sky. What a failure. There was so much hype, so much potential, and it just turned out so bad. So bad. So bad, in fact, I actually have not played it. In fact, I watched someone else played it. I did... I was tempted to ask if I could play it, but then I realized something. It's a giant open world game, and I hate giant open world games, because... Here's the thing with open world games. When you have such an open world, and that's the main premise, you're just saying they're going... What about the story? What about the characters? Is there anything besides traveling? If, if I wanted to go to exotic places, I'd go to freaking Canada! Oh, well. And then, let's see, what else was there? There was, oh, here's something that everyone will go. It was a Kickstarter failure. It was such an overhyped thing. And we never got the Mega Man we wanted. I'm talking about my number nine. Played this for my channel as well. Here's the thing. If you go in thinking, uh, you're not like wanting it to be Mega Man, it's not a bad game. But if you're someone like who, who's my friend who kickstarted this game and just like, it's a failure, I never got my Steam key. You just gotta go, you back this game. You back this game and so much, so much promise. So much promise was there, so much was still, so, so, so much was just destroyed. But there was some parts of my number nine I liked. There was like uh, the one of the my numbers, Avi number seven. He was funny. Out of all nine of them, there are nine my numbers. Out of all nine of them, one of them was the only one I enjoyed. The rest can go fuck themselves, as far as I'm concerned. And the last game I can think of would be Battleborn. Now here's the thing: Battleborn's not a bad game. It's just how 2K decided to release it. The reason why it's in the bad section is because it came out when Overwatch came out. It also Hmm, it just wasn't what you were looking for. Overwatch kind of trumped it, but here's the thing. Battleborn had a story. Battleborn had a lot of good stuff I liked about it, but there was just so much there, you just like, Overwatch does this slightly better. The only thing I didn't like about Overwatch was the characters 
we're all humans. In Battleborn, you're playing cr crazy ass fiends. You're playing a demon child with like four arms. You're playing like a hawk man. You're playing like a weird mushroom guy who froze his mushroom head to make a weird vacuum of healing powder around your foes. You play as a samurai vampire. If only Battleborn had... I'm just waiting for it to come out free to play. I'm just waiting for it to go free to play because this game went downhill so fast. Single tier for you, Battleborn. Single tier. Oh, well. Moving on to the... Well, that's all about the games, really. Don't really have much else because... Uh, trying to think about what you played back in 2016, there wasn't that much I could think of that was that pretty much came out in 2016 or didn't we really play that much either. Oh, well. Moving on to the good and the bad movies number two good movies gonna give it to you deadpool who can say anything about deadpool but it was fucking brilliant oh maximum effort to the ends it was such a good film everything about deadpool was brilliant it followed the comics it was such i i okay i just got the dvd for christmas i've now rewatched it i've watched it about 20 times i have Flash and Arrow, get films that I have, not films, TV shows I have not watched. I just got them for Christmas, and I'm just sitting here going, I'm, I'm busy with Deadpool, I'm busy with Deadpool. Sorry, DC, but I'm busy with Marvel. It's so good, it's so good. And another film I enjoyed in 2016 was Fantastical Beasts and Where to Find Them. Now, here's the thing. Harry Potter, I'm a, I was a huge Harry Potter fan growing up. There were, I loved Harry Potter. But then with the layer ones, you just got boring and more, oh, he's the chosen one, Harry. In the original Harry Potter, I would always say the original was the best because it was filled with wonder. Like, you feel like a child walking in, seeing Diagon Alley, seeing Hogwarts for the first time. And that's what Fantastical Beasts felt like to me. You saw a wonderful world. You saw uh, the same wizarding world you did from Harry Potter. But in a different scenario, in a different place, you saw it in New York. And instead of like sol solving a problem, you were finding Fantastical Beasts. And that's what it is. Each beast was so rememberable. It was such a good film. Definitely gonna get it when it comes out on DVD. Bad films. Bad films. Ghostbusters. That's it. Just, just Ghostbusters alone. Ghostbusters alone. I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan. I even like the second Ghostbuster film, and I know a lot of people don't like it. The minute I say, oh, I thought Ghostbusters 2 was okay, they give me stares of dagger, just like, take the vet, man, take it back, or else you're gonna die tonight. I just say, look, my opinion. My opinion is, Ghostbusters 2016 sucked as hell. In fact, I recommend to people, do not... Go near it with a 50-foot pole. If you want, if you're even slightly interested in the film, if you're even slightly interested, go watch the Nostalgia Critics video on it. He does a perfect rendition of what's good and well, not, not really good about it, anything that's bad about it. Just there'll be a link in the description. It's a good, good review. Watch Nostalgia Critic doing Ghostbusters. Brilliant. And that's pretty much it. I didn't really think of that many bad films because I don't really watch bad films. I just avoid bad films. Like the plague. Like, there's nothing good about them. But we could definitely go on to number three TV shows of 2016. 2016 had a pretty much good array of television shows, but the three that pop into my head the minute I came was thinking of stuff was Netflix, Voltron. Voltron. Okay. Think what happens when you take five mini lion bots and combine them to make one giant super lion bot and then you get the guys who made Avatar the Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra. You get a new Netflix series that's so freaking good. I am so looking forward to Voltron Season 2. It was such a good, it was like seeing The Legend of Korra art style but because I've never known anything about Voltron. I know nothing about Voltron until I watched this rendition of it and I was just like I need to look this stuff up. This is fucking brilliant. I did. Looked at the older stuff. It's okay. Nothing, nothing to write home about. Nothing to say it was life-changing. No. 2016's Voltron was a brilliant show. And the second film... <laughs> I still think of movies. Second TV show I watched was... Stranger Things. Now, this is another Netflix series. I just watch Netflix. I don't watch television anymore. Because you could get Netflix and anything. I'm pretty sure I could get Netflix on my fridge. That's how c common Netflix is. 
But yes, Stranger Things was basically much like a story set in the 80s where even the music, like the music gave me a giant oxen for you vibed about it. I was just like, oh, I like this already. I like this already. And it's just, you just, it's, I'm trying to think about it, but like, because Stranger Things was a show set in the 80s. It was about a group of friends whose one of their friends went missing. Then this mysterious girl who has psychic powers comes out of nowhere, just shows up. It's about eight episodes long. And they're doing season two on it, and I'm just saying they're going, I want season two now. I want to see what is this. It is so interesting. You're just hooked, and you're just wondering, where the hell is this monster? Where does it come from? How does it come from there? How does it get here? Is it is it a plant? Is it an animal? Is it a hybrid of both? I have no idea. But it's good. And the third thing I watched was a, was a web show. Was a was it was an internet show by the name of Ruby Volume Four. Now currently Ruby Volume Four is not done yet, but I'm still enjoying Ruby Volume Four. It's literally because the Ruby is a very very loved show. I love it. I just everything about Ruby. I love it. If you never watched Ruby before, go watch. If you like Rooster Teeth, if you watched Red vs. Blue, you'll like Ruby. It's just it's it's like Western anime. That's what it is. It's basically that's what people pretty much sum it up as Western anime, and that's what it is. It's good. There's just Volume Four is not done yet, but the end of Volume Three just left you on a giant cliffhanger. You're just like, oh my fucking god, what happened? That character just died. That character just died. No, that character just died, and they were going. They just confessed their love. My heart was shattered to bits. And seeing those characters move on after their deaths with their friends, just seeing Ruby, Yang, Blake, and Ye and Weiss just like be separated from Team Ruby and going back to their respective places and they're all doing their own things. You're just going like, at the end they're gonna get back together, but I want to see what happens to each individual character. I want to see what happens to them after this horrible tragedy in Volume 3. So I'm just, I'm just enjoying Volume 4. The, the current episode right now I just watched was Volume 3, 4, Episode 7, where you see Ruby's uncle, Crow, battle against a scorpion-like villain called Tyrion, and it's just like, oh my god, he's just, this is, this is so f badass, it's swords versus scorpion tails, with guns and bullets, and just watching there, and then the music kicks in. The one thing I like about Mu Ruby, besides the action and the story, is the music as well. The music that plays, that's now, I think, Crow's theme, is called Bad Luck Charm, and I'm just waiting for Volume 4 soundtrack to just come out and just go like, Give me the volume. Give me, give me that soundtrack. I want to listen to this nonstop on loop. It's such a good song. Speaking of songs, let's move on to number four, S music of 2016, Ruby Volume Three. Yeah, that just like we go from one Ruby to the other because Volume Three soundtrack just came out for Ruby, and I'm just listening to it. My favorite song out of Volume Three was "I Am the One," which plays when Mercury Emerald versus against Coco and the other guy. I've forgotten his name now. <laughs> but it was such a good fight. It was such a brilliant fight. And the music was just so pumping in action. It was so right in your face. You're just like, rock on! And there was also the Deadpool soundtrack. Gonna give it to you. Oh, I just, I've already, I've listened to that soundtrack so many times. I stopped listening to it recently. When I rewatched Deadpool, I'm just like, get out the soundtrack, put it on high volume, Rock out with Deadpool doing some badassery. That's 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 what it is. That's why it is. Volume four of Ruby and Deadpool was only the music I really listened to. Like there wasn't much of music I listened to. Well, maybe maybe it's video game soundtracks they could count as well. Cause I definitely listened to Fury and Oxen Free a, a good chunk this year as well because they had brilliant soundtracks as well. But yeah, those are very much the only music I listened to. And I don't really listen to bad music as well. I guess the music I could say I don't like would be anything that plays on the radio. Anything that plays on the radio, because my work pretty much lets you listen to the music in the background, but when you hear the same songs over and over, whatever's like popular with right now, like uh, currently like what's well, popular, say from September all the way to December, I hate. That's pretty much it. What, whatever you hear on the radio, you're just like, okay, that yeah, you'll probably hate that. Because I don't like listening to the same boring songs over and over and over and over and over and over. And I'm going to need to slap myself soon because I'm going to keep going. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's that. 
Number five. What was the most you did in 2016? Most I did. Most I did. Besides YouTubing and watching television a bit, was playing card games. Playing board games and card games with my friends. I go to a local game shop and I go there to play Yu-Gi-Oh! a lot. Like I lo like every Thursday. Every Thursday I play a bit of Yu-Gi-Oh! If you're wondering what decks I play, I play a Performer Pal, Magician, Odd Eyes deck, a, a Fluffles deck, which is basically cute and cuddly animals, like stuffed teddy bears, and they have like sides of edgems, which are just like swords, sabers, and scissors, and it's a fusion deck, you merge them together, it's like Five Nights at Freddy's, the deck of Five Nights at Freddy's. Some people actually call it FNAF as well, because it's like Five Nights at Fright Furs. And the last deck I played in Yu-Gi-Oh! is also called Raid Raptors. Basically, birds of prey. Yeah, it's just like flying birds of prey that like to stalk the prey. Just like, ah, I special summon, special summon, special summon. And look at that, I still have a hand. The other game I play a lot of is because recently in the format of Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh god, the format in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, let's think about this. What happens when people at your locals decide to make decks that say, Oh, you like to summon monsters. You're not having any of that. You like to set cards. Oh, you ain't having none of that. You like to do anything. You like having a hand. You see that deck you have? I have a special magic card that says, Oh, that's the graveyard. That's how bad the format is. There's been times where I've been like, Oh, you have a special magic card? I have a lighter. Lighter burns your deck. Lighter burns your hand. Lighter burns your field. And I punch you in the face and take your wallet. That's how bad the format's gone where I'm just like, I want to do that. So I went and played another card game called Card Fight Vanguard. Oh my god, this is such a good game. Card Fight Vanguard is such a good game. I love the anime. I watched the anime back in the day. And because the format of Yu-Gi-Oh! was getting so bad, a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! players decided, screw Yu-Gi-Oh! We're going to play a different game. Some of them went to a different card game because they went to either Magic or Force of Will, which is another good card game. I, I was thinking of getting into that, but a lot of them went to Vanguard because it's literally got an anime. They could just watch the anime and think, this is not bad. I like it. And it's such a good card game. Those are what I did the most in 2016 was playing card games. It was just so good. Number six. What did I like about 2016? Well, in 2016, I actually got my very first desktop computer. I named it Morgana, after the cat out of, out of Persona 5. Just because it stole my heart, and I love it. Such a, such a good thing. This is how I've managed to get so many videos done. I love this. Oh, it's, so, it's a good, it's a good computer. It's good. The other thing I like about 2016, I managed to get up to 300 subscribers. Not bad. My original goal was to get up to 500 subscribers, but... Eh, you can't, you can't win them all. You can't win them all. At least I got far enough to say, I'm halfway there. I'm halfway there. Just to keep going. Just keep mushing along. Yeah, but that's pretty much all I really like. Oh, no, no, no. There was one more thing. There was one more thing. I won a tournament as well in those card games. And uh, we had our first ever card fight tournament for Card Fight Vanguard. I won that tournament. It was like an elim elimination round type of thing. Like, you lose three times, you're out type of deal. Instead of a point system. Because those are kind of inaccurate half the time. But, yeah, I won it. Why did I win? Jack shit, because it was our first tournament. It was just like, it was a fun first tournament. Second tournament, we were pretty much playing for a mat. And I wanted that mat, and it's just like, okay, I'm gonna win this mat. I'm gonna use my gold paladins and win this mat. I'm just like, son of a bitch, I'm up against you? I'm up against, because apparently, because I'm apparently like one of the two, or really three top players. One of them is my friend Spencer. The other is my other friend called Luke. They are good. They're good at what they do, and they can be dicks at times when they're when there's like, nope, you can't do that. But yeah, I pretty much went up against my friend Spencer first round, and we're just like, we can push each other to the limit. We can put each other in a tight position and just be like, oh, okay, this is where the fun begins. When you have to go up against him in the final round, you're just like, this is gonna be an epic showdown. In the first round, you're just like, well, this is this is gonna make the tournament slightly easier for the noobs. So pretty much that happened. Lost in first tournament. I will still get that mat one day. I will win a mat. One of these days I will win a mat. Oh well. And the thing I... I'm trying to think. Was there anything else? No, there wasn't really much. There wasn't really much. I mean, besides the tournament, the game to 300 subscribers, and the PC. 
pretty much not that good of a year. It was an okay year, it just wasn't all that. But I could say, number seven, what did I not like about 2016? Oh, this is going to be a long one. Well, we can start with the, uh, we can start with many things. We could start with mm, the internet exploding over a gorilla dying. That was one. I'm just like, it's a gorilla. Get over it. The other things I didn't like was people getting triggered so easily. In fact, I hate the fact that I just used that word, triggered. I cannot stand. Here's the thing. If, if you get triggered easily, get some help. In fact, no, don't get help. Talk to someone. Accept it. Don't go, ah, your, your opinion's different from mine. I don't like you. Someone help me. I need a safe space. No, none of that. Grow up. The world don't own shit to you. Grow the fuck up. God. Uh, that's just like another thing. The whole, and also like, uh, there's just... That's yeah, good. We're not going to get politics into this. We could be here all day if I went with, through the politics of like Brexit and that and just like... Yo, you know what? You know what? I'm done. I'm done. I'm just like, I'll just move somewhere else. I'll move into a country that's still in the EU, maybe. Oh, well. But, yes, that's the tag video. I kind of leave it on a sour note, really, when I think about it. Ooh. Oh, well. I hope you enjoyed the tag video. And the people that I'm tagging now, you're going to have the fun with this one. First person I'm tagging, Everyday John. You have been tagged, mister. The second person. Ooh, what could be, what could do, what could we say about this one? Skaldary, you're number two. Come on down and do the tag video, would ya? And number three of the persons I'm thinking of tagging. Number three as I stroke my non-existent beard. Eh, why not Sweeby? Sweeby, you've been tagged. Do it, girl. Yep, this has been the tag video of 2016. Not a very creative name. Not a very creative name. Hey, but I kind of enjoy doing this tag video. I might even do my own tag video of What do you want to see in 2017? That could be good. Meerkat, if you've not done that yet, do it if you're watching this video. But yes, this has been DJ Liam Max saying, I hope you enjoyed this tag video and expect more to come. Stay frosty.